Uh, we had a couple that just left. I don't know where they went, but they were from American Indian Television. So we've got a lot of people here tonight, and I'm grateful with all my heart to all of you for all the beauty that you shared with me, the time and the patience to put up with me because I'm not the easiest cat to put up with. And maybe that's true because it scares some folks away that I don't need to be around. Okay? For the band button.
I'm here today, uh, I'm just blessed. I'm the chair that we be blessed with you guys. You know, that's all that means. I want to do some music for this, this project and, uh, you know, I go way back to so immediately I was in. But um, what's crazy about me actually doing this whole music thing is I got into this business as uh, this business of hip hop as a break dancer, in which, uh, yeah, Larry's here. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My reader over there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and um, was break dancer for Houdini. And uh, so got in as a break dancer. And then uh, I didn't grow up saying I wanted to be a rapper. That wasn't, you know, when I was eight years old, I was watching Tom Jones. And, you know, yeah, I just dated myself. And so uh, I knew I wanted to be an entertainer. So I used hip hop to get into this entertainment business. Uh, what's crazy also is Dion know my history from way back. So uh, my family originally came from Haiti, and uh, yet yeah, no doubt, yet yeah, Nicole introduced me to Dion. And um, so uh, a lot of you guys, of course, see uh, White Flag more popular as first Haitian in hip hop, and that's false. And he's even acknowledged that. Um, no, no, not a rapper. He's a producer. He's a producer. That's the first rapper in the room. Hey, what up? Yeah, Herbie, no, he's a producer. Let's go. Who, Herbie? Yeah, yeah. That's what you're going to call Herbie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Anyway, so, uh, so, uh, being again, you know, that, that, from Haitian descent, when I came out, it wasn't the uh, thing, you know, for those that know Haitian uh, Americans, or those that came directly from Haiti to America, they were fashionably challenged. <laughs> They know more than what they're talking about. <laughs> and so uh, I was the dude who kept it under wraps. I had the, you know, the suede front and the cable hat and so on. I was not trying to have that, you know, recognized that way. And the reason why is because of the ridicule and uh, prejudice that exists. And uh, I was fighting another racism at the time. And that racism was uh, hip hop versus music. Uh, we were on, on, on tour with artists with, with uh, vocalists, uh, musicians, and they looked down at us. We wanted real musicians to them. So uh, I was fighting that racism, showing everyone that hip-hop is a form of entertainment. And um, I used that to increase my, my knowledge in the business, as well as my skills to later play a keyboard, and write songs. I wrote Police Music and Culture, and um, see later on, 3 LW, right? They the rapper and the Daryl Strawberry, we won't talk about that. And, um, and so to have Dion you know, recognize my talents as a songwriter, producer, on the above, and have me be part of this project, again, I say I'm blessed. And uh, thank you for having me down. And uh, I'm, it looks like you guys enjoyed it, so thank you. I have to say, as I go back to about, I don't know, 1990, we started the TV show community. Neil Todd. Neil Todd is a formal talk show that you and I have a formal talk covering issues that the community normally didn't get a chance to go to in the industry. It also covers stuff like that where the youth have a the community, maybe a black family unity for Through these events, I met Sammy, I met Pat, I met Ernie. And the reason why we did the program was because we saw something wrong in the community. We didn't like what was going on. The whole, the temperature in the community at the time was not right. There's too many negative things going on. But we thought that we could do something like there was no positive for this TV show. Many years later, I was thought working with an incarcerated youth. And I called on Ernie and Kango to come and talk to the kids. Where the trips that Ernie took up to the facility to visit the kids, and Kango as well, I said, you know, I'm going to do something. I went to do something that's going to make an impact. And we talked about maybe a, a where are they now kind of thing on uh, certain rap groups. Only the spark that I got, that was popular in the tent. And Ernie invited myself over to his home in Jersey City, along with my then fiance. Actually, we weren't even engaged at the time yet, but we knew which direction we were going. And Ernie said, Look, somebody wants to do a documentary. Um, if this doesn't pan out, let me know. So after a few phone calls, in about another month or two, nothing panned out. I called Larry and said, let me know what's going on, kind of like an FYI. He said, look, I don't know this other cat, 
I don't trust this other cat. I know you. I know how you did your program me your lives. I want you to do this work of me. And I was like, wow. Because this gentleman right here to my left, he's had me. But he's my brother. And that's where it started just about five years ago. This is where we are now. So what I'd like to do is say thank you to a few people. I have to first and foremost thank my family. I'm going to start first with my wife, Colette. <laughs> we, we're beautiful, too. We have, we have many a night where I just had to be out taking care of something with the documentary. You know, especially when it came to editing many a day where I was with Chris Wood for five to eight hours a day on, on a Monday. We had nights where I might have been out in Staten Island with Mike Savan and did the, hip, the other side of the Hip Hop Six Element t-shirts. By the way, when everybody leaves here, everybody's going to get a t-shirt. Alright? Everybody. Um, there were just nights where I didn't get to see my son, Noah, who's only two years old. I came home, he was already asleep. I'm laying in bed after taking a shower, and I'm just looking at him smiling. And she's like, why are you looking at him like that? I just want to look. Yeah, I miss him. I have to thank my sister, Alicia. When we started our game productions back in the day, a bunch of guys were throwing parties. She only gave money. She let me $100 for the for a party when I was still in college. <laughs> okay, so I have to thank me because she's always been there to me. I got to thank my brother, Don. He's a big guy at the door with the bear. That's probably about the biggest brother, William. Oh, there he is right there. That's my brother, Don. Um, they were like a second mother and father to me growing up. You know, I didn't get in trouble in this neighborhood growing up because they had so many friends that if I went anywhere and tried to do something wrong, it was like an eight buck was in debt. So I, it was just too difficult to do wrong around here for me. I want to thank my man Michael Van. Every time Dion wants to do something, Michael did it. My frat brother, my line brother, was a Jason Gam, was Chris Martin, big dog, brother Kenny Carter. I don't see him, but I know he's around here somewhere. Kenny Willard. All right, my man, and Brother George O'Foy, that's my eighth over there, my number one. Um, these guys always look out for me. Sonia Lee from Black Enterprise Magazine, Nicole Monroe, who, Nicole and I don't get to see each other all the time anymore, but what we do is like it's 1991 all over again. Nicole. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Nicole's always been there, and she seen me at my best, and she seen me at my work. Absolutely. Our gang is full of success. Our gang 62, 62.com to the fullest. Everybody, I want to thank you. Sister, you don't remember, we worked together in the city broadcast. We used to bump into each other in the elevator all the time, headed up to the 40 with other sports going back in the day. And I used to pick up your mom, I used to pick up your mom's check. She would walk, Betty Shabazz would walk down Crown Street on her break at Megan Lewis College, and I'd be sweeping our front porch. And she'd say, honey, can you go to a house there to pick up my check for me? Like, Mother Betty, who Betty Shabazz? <laughs> I jumped in the LIB van and went and got the latest check. So, listen, I thank all of you for coming out. But what we want to do right now is we want to give you all a chance to ask us some questions that you may have about the documentary. So I'm going to turn it over here to Brother Jason Gamble. Brother Gamble, you're going to moderate this Q&A. And if you want to get to a microphone, you're going to have Chris Murray and you're going to have Brother Kenny Carter walking around and give you a microphone so you can ask them the questions you may want to ask. Uh, I forgot two people I'm going to deliver. Michael Gonzalez, Mike Gonzalez, who is the top hip hop writer. And our brother from the Bronx, Joe Conzo, who started in the 70s. The movie, the movie may make you think that I was the only one doing it, but they're correct. I was the only one, meaning one. Joe was part of that one. There was one or two other people that were part of that one. We were all part of that one. So yes, there was only one person doing that because it was us, and we were part of that one. And uh, this is his new book, and like we have to, we have to support each other. So have that. Later, I'm going to be selling and signing books. Who chapter the classic that the most publishers are afraid to deal with me, but somehow I got past it. And, uh, any questions, anybody? Um, I, I, I think I forgot. Did I say thank you to Lydia Alvarez, who's a close friend of Tango, and 
Kate Wood, who actually is Chris Wood's wife, they too were very, very patient and helpful in this whole process, especially coming down to the end. Uh, my niece, Denise Ashley, sitting right there. Good friend of the family, my wife's best friend, Maya Slay Garrison. Thank you. Those of you again, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Leighton Finn, right there, he's our director of photography. He shot a lot of new school footage and a lot of old school footage. Leighton and I, we've been doing this together for like 15, 15 years. Um, and the Supreme Court judge, Larry Martin, another one of our Alpha brothers. And I can't forget, I can't forget, can't forget Brooklyn Exposure. All right? The management, the staff, the ownership here, understand that. This could have been done. This event could very well have been done somewhere in the past, in the street, obviously. We wanted to have it here because it's a black run business, it's a black owned business, the dollar is going to rotate in this community several times more, unlike what we normally do say in other communities. Brother Jason, oh, and let me thank my father, Donald Bashman, because Lord knows he's been my biggest critic when God knows he loves me to death and we love him to death. He's always been his dad from day one. He lays it home right now after something three minutes showed last year, right? But he's our father, we love him, and he loves us, and he's always, you know, the critic, but he's a critic because he wants to see you do well. Brother Jason, tell you. Our mother was the Lord of Garvey Ashton, which is why the website is out. Those of you who deserve the website is ourgame62.com. That's dedicated to my mom, our mom, who passed away 62 years of age back in 1990. And she is always important no matter what. She wasn't even trying to be critical of anything. If you weren't doing it, she was like, do it. This is how it was, that's how it was raised. So, Brother Jason, you can commence to an end.